Now this is a very nice phone. It is LG's flagship for 2015, and although they're a little late to the smartphone game, they still have a lot to offer. The camera is great, the screen is awesome, and overall the build quality is great. So let's start off with the design. It's not a metal back, it is a plastic back, but it doesn't feel cheap in any way. It's not one of those glossy backs that attract fingerprints and grime, but it's one of those smooth and silky backs that feel really good when you hold them. So it also makes the phone really slippery and I've dropped this phone way more than I should. And speaking of dropping the phone, I guess durability is good because it hasn't cracked or shown any signs of tear throughout the times that I've dropped the phone, which is at least five times. So on the back you have a camera, which I'll talk about later, and you also have back facing buttons. Now the middle one is the power button and the top and bottom ones are the volume up and down buttons. And they're textured to make sure you know which button you're pressing, even when you're not looking it. And it works because I've never once pressed the power button while I'm trying to turn the volume up. So that is a good feature that LG has. And I found myself reaching for the back buttons on every phone I used, even if they didn't have back buttons, which means I got used to them very quickly and very easily. And overall, I think it is a way more convenient place to have back buttons on your phone. Finally, at the bottom is some G4 branding, and there's also a speaker that is placed at the worst place possible because when you hold the phone in portrait mode, your hand naturally covers the speakers underneath right here, and it just blocks the speakers and makes them muffled. But when they're not blocked and muffled, they sound really great and they're crisp and clear and loud. So finally, the LG G4 is curved very slightly. It's not bendable like the G Flex 2, but you can tell that there is slight of a curve to it, and it makes the screen a lot more um, immersive, and I just really like it, and you can definitely tell that it's there. So speaking of the immersive screen, this screen is just a pleasure to use. It's a 5.5 inch Quad HD screen. It works very well in real life. It is saturated, it's not oversaturated, it has a lot of vibrance, and it is just a pleasure to use. It's Quad HD, which means it is a 2560 by 1440p display, and considering that's more than my computer monitor over there, I'd say that's a really decent resolution. And overall, just using this, it makes everything you do on the phone more enjoyable, whether it's taking pictures, or reading email, or watching YouTube videos, it just looks very nice on the screen. So moving to the most talked about feature on the G4, it is the camera. So it has a 16 megapixel back facing camera where it has an aperture of f1.8. This means you'll be getting detailed and crisp images that is easy to zoom in on and you won't lose any detail and also a very nice shallow depth of field, which is great for capturing DSLR like photos. So if you want to see my camera review, it's a detailed review of the camera. You can click right here and I'll have it for you. Just click on the screen. So anyways, the pictures that the G4 produces are amazing. They're very detailed with a 16 megapixel camera, and even when you zoom in, you don't lose any of the sharpness or detail. So also, you will get a very shallow depth of field, which is very nice, and it makes it look like you're taking the photo with a DSLR. So that is one very good thing about the G4. You can see that the foreground is blurry, the middle ground is focused, which it should be, and then the background is also blurry to get that bouquet. Detail is great, depth of field is great, the brightness is great, the contrast is great, there's also a lot of saturation which is nice, but the one thing that it does a little bit too much of is sharpening. So you can see that some of the stuff that's supposed to be blurry, you can see it's doing a little bit of sharpening contrast to them, and that's something we don't want to see, but that can be easily fixed with an update. The camera is also really fast, and all you have to do to open up the camera and quickly take a shot is double tap the back facing volume down button and it will instantly open up the camera and take a shot for you. Now sometimes these photos aren't the best, so if you're looking for a higher quality photo, you might want to open it manually and take your time for it to focus. Moving on to focusing, it has a laser autofocus system, which is a very nice touch. So what the laser autofocus does is it takes the laser at the back, it shoots out a laser at the object, and it detects the time it takes for it to bounce back. That Once it knows that, it will know how far away the object is, and it will rack focus to that. Now this kind of autofocus system is very great, and it usually gets focused on every single time, and it even rivals that of an entry-level DSLR. So if it doesn't get the focus right, you can always use manual mode, which allows for manual focus, aperture, white balance, shutter speed, and ISO, and a lot more functions. It also allows raw photos, which is very good because you can play around with the colors and saturation in editing, and it also allows 4K video. So if you want to see a 4K video test, you can click right here, and I will have it on my channel, also in the description below this video. 
Next up is user experience. The G4 is running Lollipop 5.1 right out of the box and it is very smooth. Transitions run smoothly, it opens apps fast, and it is just a very nice and smooth experience to use this phone. The skin on the G4 is actually pretty non-obtrusive. It has its own version of Google Now that you can get rid of. It has dual window features like the Samsung Galaxy series that you can get rid of. It has notification toggles which you can get rid of. So basically what LG is trying to do here is give you a lot of these useful features and if you don't find them useful, you can always get rid of them. And that leads to a non-obtrusive skin that is actually pretty nice. With that being said, there are also some things that I don't like about the LG G4 skin. First of all, you can't change the lock screen to something more toned down, and I don't really like these bubbly effects that they make you use when you unlock it. And also, I don't really like the fact that you can't remove the volume and brightness settings in the notification bar, because in my opinion, they take up a little bit too much space in the notifications. So overall, there are still some other quirks in LG software, but they are not deal breakers. So also LG's skin comes with a lot of bloat and I don't know if it's just because mine is the Korean preview version and I have a bunch of Korean apps on my phone, but LG's skin takes up about 9 gigabytes of storage which is not acceptable for a 2015 smartphone. But what you can do to supplement that is use a micro SD card. So LG allows you to remove the back of the G4 just by simply prying it open and underneath there you can replace the battery. So that will be a good feature if you run out of battery and you need to get a quick charge and you don't have time to charge it, you can remove the battery and replace it with a freshly charged one. So that is option one. Also, when the battery inevitably dies on you, you can always replace it by buying a new one from LG and then sticking it back in the phone and you will have a brand new phone good to go. Also, you can change the micro SD card. You can add up to a two terabyte micro SD card and that is good for storing photos, videos, apps, and especially those 4K videos that do take up a lot of space. Now these options are something that a lot of manufacturers have stepped away from, but LG still believes in removable backs, replaceable batteries, and of course, expandable storage. So moving on to one of the most important things in the phone is the battery life. So how long does the battery last? So I'm not a power user, and in fact, I only use my phone for about two hours of screen on time, not because the G4's battery limits me, it's just that it's my personal use, and I'm able to get two full days with it, which is amazing. Now, I imagine if you're a power user, you would get about a one day of it with about five hours of screen on time, and that would be a very good battery life. So overall, this battery life on the G4 has surprised me, and I wasn't expecting it, but it truly does deliver. So anyways guys, now is conclusion time. Now this phone is a very great phone and deserves a spot in my pocket from now on. And that is due to the DSLR-like camera, a great screen, and awesome battery life. So one of the only cons I see with this phone is that the back is very slippery, but that is easily fixable by a skin. And in fact, you can check out my Skinomia skin video right here. So this phone is an amazing phone and I do really recommend it to all of you guys out there. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching this video, and if you want to see more LG G4 coverage, I'll have them on my channel, links below in the description, or you can also click on the annotations right here, right here, or wherever I put them. So anyways guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in my next video.